It's been quite a while since I've done a video of my tanks, but this is a special one. My blue dreams in this tank have done so well. There's just uh, so many of them. And they're so prolific and healthy and lively that I'm thinking they need a new home where they have much more room. So, here we go. Now that Blue Dream five gallon tank is up in my bedroom and this is the stairway and when I started thinking about getting another tank, a larger one for them, a 20 gallon long, the only two places that could possibly uh, house a tank of that size, because it's about 30 inches, is this spot here, which isn't too practical. You know, I could just move that stuff, but I don't really use this room a whole lot. And uh, it's just not ideal. Even though the floor being solid rather than carpeted would be better but it's just not the oh the other problem is that light switch is kind of low and therefore that would interfere with uh, the light and just above the tank be kind of awkward to reach the light switch so the only other option was right here in my office where I do spend a lot of time at the computer because here's where my computer is right now it's kind of messy okay so I decided to put it in here since I do spend a lot of time in here and it'd be kind of nice to be able to look over at the shrimp as I'm working here. Okay, see you in a bit. I have a space right here just inside the doorway to my office and with I had just about three feet or so after that jutting out part of the wall that would fit a 20 gallon long tank which is 30 inches wide or long um, and the light switch is situated at a better spot so it doesn't really interfere with anything and it's easy to access and uh, it does have an outlet behind it which is crucial plus I had that jutting out part of the wall which is perfect for a place to hang a power strip so it could be above the tank which is better so that no possible water could get into the power strip. So I'll tell you more details on what I did here, but this is what I've been spending the last week or so doing. Okay, let me stop it here for a sec. Okay, the first thing I did, which I've always wanted to try, was to make a stand dedicated to this tank. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos about how to do it and it's all completely by 2x4s just screwing together 2x4s. It's actually about 26 cut pieces of 2x4. I had to buy six 8 foot lengths of 2x4s in order to make this stand. And with careful measuring of the eight foot long pieces, I was able to just about use every single inch of those eight long or eight feet long boards. 
so I didn't really waste any money. Um, and then I spray painted it uh, black to kind of match the rim of the tank. Um, it was kind of fun. It took me one day to build the thing. Well, one one morning to cut all the pieces. There are 26 different lengths and uh, the afternoon and evening to actually put it together, screw it together. And then the next two days later I spray painted it with some black gloss enamel. And I think it turned out pretty well. The way you do it is to make a top and a bottom uh, with just a rectangle braced in the middle. Uh, and then you connect them together with one supporting 2x4 on the inside. And then you add a couple of 2x4s. Uh, this one you see on the front is actually doing the supporting from the top table down to the bottom table and that's really where all the support is the weight is going down through that piece and then you also put another one over on the side here so each leg is actually three pieces of two by four. So it's super, super solid and can bear any amount of weight because I forget how much this 20 gallon long is with the gravel and all the water, but it's two or 300 pounds of weight or more. Um, and so it needs to be well supported. And then I just put a half inch plywood on the bottom and on the top to support the tank. So it was kind of fun and it turned out pretty well. The next thing I needed to do was to level the stand. If you don't have the tank uh, level on the stand, then what's going to happen is there will be too much uh, pressure on one end or one corner of the tank, water pressure, and uh, that could lead to problems later on with leaking. And so what I did was after I got the tank, I got it at Petco, I brought it home, I set the stand exactly where I wanted the stand to be in here, and then I put the tank on top of it, filled it with water, all the way to the top and then because that would simulate the weight that will ultimately be on the stand and then what you do is you just get shims and you uh, put shims underneath the stand wherever you need to uh, put them and then evenly distribute them um, with a level on the top of the stand or the top of the tank all along so you can check when it is level both ways left to right front to back and uh, another thing that I wanted to make sure was that this stand even with all the weight of the water it still could wobble a bit because it's on carpet and uh, so what I did was underneath the top uh, 2x4 for the tabletop portion, um, well behind it, behind it into the wall, I have another 2x4 that I screwed into the studs of the wall. And then I have screwed the uh, top of the stand from the inside through that 2x4 into that 2x4 that that's screwed to the studs in the wall. 
and it is rock solid. No way is it ever moving, and so I feel safer about that. So that was a success. Next I had to figure out how to do the lighting on here, and so I had ordered another Finex 30 inch um, Planted Plus light, and which I have in my tanks, uh, for my tanks upstairs. And this is a way I've found it's very easy to hang them, to suspend them. And so I got some brackets and a 36 inch shelf, all in black. Well, the shelf was in black, but I couldn't find any brackets um, of the size I needed in black. Um, so I spray painted some white ones. And I have the brackets extending beyond the shelf so that I could use that hole at the end of the bracket to suspend a J-bolt and a little uh, spring, whatever you call that, spring clip or something. And it takes the, uh, the little attachment that you slide into the grooves in the light and that's the way you can suspend this light and so that worked out I just did all that today the the light came in the mail today and so I had already put the shelf up with the brackets um, a day or two ago okay so that that worked out well I'll tell you more about the light in a, a little bit Another thing I just did today was um, put the uh, power strip into the wall over on the side here above the tank so that the air pump and everything uh, cords and outlets will be above the tank. Um, and then I had all these cords dangling down from the power strip, which I, I hate the sight of ugly cords. And so last night I uh, was thinking and thinking, how can I hide those cords? And it suddenly came to me, I don't know what made me think of it, um, is just get some of that pipe insulation, that foam pipe insulation. This is, I think, the three-quarter inch size. And it's uh, just a right size it has a slit you know down the tube it's like those pool noodles or whatever whatever but it has a slit uh, where you can easily slip uh, the pipe or, or cords through it and so that's what I did uh, I slipped the cords down through it all the way down And uh, and then I just put Velcro, attached it at a few places to the wall with Velcro. So it looks kind of much neater. So you don't see all those separate ugly cords. All you see is that gray pipe insulation so it's a little bit neater so that was kind of cool and it worked out another thing I did was this lid it's a Versatop lid it isn't quite um, doesn't quite reach all the way to the back of the tank there was about a half inch let me see if I can see there was about a half inch Uh, gap and so what I did see this this lid is a hinged glass lid and then at the back they have a plastic strip about three inches or two and a half inches wide but it didn't quite reach to the very back of the tank I'm not sure if that's intentional or what but 
uh, I didn't like the fact that there was that gap there. And so what I did was I went to Tap Plastics and I found this H, I forget what they called it, this little piece of plastic anyway, that has uh, slits on both sides. And so I just slid the uh, plastic, back of the plastic uh, piece on the tank cover into that slot and the slot was a bit wider and so what I did was I put double stick tape on the um, edge of the aquarium top plastic and then pushed it into that slot and then it's long enough that it hangs beyond the gap and so that works and so more of the tank is covered so that less evaporation of the water will occur. Okay, so I like doing new things because I always have to do problem solving. Finally, let me tell you a little bit about this light that I've talked about before but it's a Finex Planet Plus SE uh, CC which you can take more control of the intensities of the colors but what I like about it is it has a mode where you can if you want just put it on automatic and it throughout the day the light intensity and colors will change uh, kind of to simulate um, the light that changes throughout a day 24 hours and I, I kinda like that I've used that on my lights upstairs and uh, it goes through uh, eight different cycles throughout the day eight three-hour cycles pretty much um, and so they have a little demo mode so I'll show it to you it goes through it of course much faster than it would in a day but it kind of gives you shows you the changes so I'll do that right now so that's like early early morning getting brighter getting more towards noon and afternoon later afternoon evening and later evening kind of getting towards midnight and then it does shut off for three or four hours from one till about five or six and then at 6 a.m. the light comes on again and it's going through this cycle again of course it doesn't happen this fast but shows you the differences throughout a day uh, speed it up of course So that's kind of cool. I like this light. Or you can just put it at whatever you like or turn it completely off. Okay, let me show you what I've got in this tank. I have a cobalt uh, heater, aquarium heater, which I really like much better than any other heaters that I've used. Um, I just recently got this double sponge filter, which is slightly different from most sponge filters because they also include a little canister at the bottom underneath the sponges and you can put media in there and those collect uh, beneficial bacteria and even filter your water even more and shrimp like these kinds of uh, sponge filters because they ultimately graze on the foam because it has a lot of biofilm on it and it's safe they will not get pulled into a, a filter as they could easily in a regular filter finally yesterday I set everything up I put the gravel in it's eco-complete uh, since I have uh, the blue dreams will be going in here they don't need a uh, an active substrate which means they don't need any kind of substrate soil that buffers the water 
that makes the pH lower. Um, and I tend to like this EcoComplete. I've used it in two of my tanks upstairs. And it's uh, inert, um, but you can easily root plants in it. And it's not as messy and dusty, turning to dust, as the uh, other substrates I've used. Um, and so I put the soil in yesterday. I, well, I completely drained it first. Uh, I put the soil in it, and then I put uh, the plants and the driftwood and, well, everything that will ultimately be in there. A couple of pieces of chola wood on the left. Uh, I got a couple of Anubias Nana plants. Those are the two smaller ones on the left hand side of the tank. Uh, on the right hand side is a, I forget what it was called, some sort of sword. Reuben. It's a Reuben sword plant and uh, I kind of like it because it doesn't have the pointy leaves. It has kind of more rounded tips to it. Uh, slightly different from an Amazon sword. And then I got a couple of longish pieces of driftwood um, which I soaked for two or three days but still they uh, one of them I think is waterlogged enough and doesn't need uh, to be weighted down. Um, but the the one that's the taller one with the taller crook there that one still is tending to float upwards a bit so I have stones on top of it towards the back and at the front to weight it down until it finally does get waterlogged enough to stay down by itself but I kind of like so ultimately it will look different you won't have those big stones in the back right back corner um, or these two stones in the front um, they're just there right now to hold down the driftwood uh, until it gets waterlogged enough to stay down there by itself. I did um, super glue uh, that middle Anubius Nana to a little stone. Um, and this one here to the left, I actually just kind of jammed it between um, a couple of rocks and eventually it will take root but you're not supposed to uh, put the uh, rhizome the horizontal rhizome into soil um, so that's they're slightly different whereas the sword plant you put directly into the soil put the roots into the soil um, and then I have a little feeding dish there. I have uh, an Indian almond leaf there, but it, it's still not waterlogged enough to float, to not float up to the top, so I have a piece of stone on it. So those will be going away, the, the stones that are in the tank that are just holding things down, ultimately, and the two pieces of chola wood. So I think this will be, I mean, they're going to have so much space and I like it much simpler uh, aquascaping. I don't really want to have too many plants in there because it just is more to take care of. And, um, and I like to see the shrimp. And so they'll have plenty of room. They have four times the space that they have presently in their five gallon. So this will be really nice once it's cycled. Uh, I started cycling the tank yesterday and I have no idea how long it's going to take. Could take a few days, a week, could take two or three weeks or more. Each tank seems to be different and so I can't put shrimp in there until until it's fully cycled, which means zero ammonia, zero nitrites, and very little nitrates. Okay, so that's where it's at, but everything's all set up. It's beautiful. I like it.
Okay, bye-bye. One last look at the final effect. So long. When I put the blue dreams in here, it could be weeks from now, I will do another video. I'm so excited for that.